sometimes I'm one of those and sometimes I'm not, and that was a case that proved it, who know where they are. And the, the elements from the ancestors call to them. So that was, I wanted to share that with you because that was a part, some people can sense them and they can pinpoint. Some people can feel the spirit. And there are times when I can, but not always. So what we do is we go in the field with four different tribal representatives, male and female. So we get a good reference because the knowledge may come through one tribe's line and not through another tribe's line. So what we do with four tribes is that we get a good cross-reference. A lot of times I get pushed into the field and so I have to even make a phone call and say, hey, I'm starting to feel something. What do you think? <laughs> Oh, you would have to ask me such a pointed question. First of all, the turtle is the teacher. And in honor of my teacher, whose totem was the turtle, I carry this bag. She is, she is herself wolf clan, but she was guided by the turtle. To you, what does the turtle mean? Did you hear that? It's the spirit of the thunder, the lightning, and the rain. And the fire. And the fire. And also, it's the guide of the, the elder, grandfather, grandmother, guiding the community. And I, I share in this morning, uh, grandmother Ishmukane. Uh, grandmother Ishmukane is a female. It's the one set together with the Mother Earth, uh, lighting the fire. And then uh, this is our guide. We ask questions to her. What is the answer she will give to us in our tradition? Well. You may be giving us guidance that we now need to go back in time and properly address turtle. One of the things that we, what, let me explain our process. <clears throat> we knew we had to deal with scientists. We knew we had to deal with people in state and federal government. So we had to devise a system that was scientific and yet still tribal and cultural and traditional. We had to create a balance. So. We brought in a team of people who could help us with our mapping. So one of the first things that we did was we said, OK, if we find something once and it's intriguing, we'll say, that's an anomaly. We find it a second time somewhere else, we say, ah, that's a cultural anomaly. You find it a third time, it's no longer an anomaly, it's cultural. The ancestors are repeating a pattern. And so what we began to do was to make note of these patterns so we could identify and to go back through because much of this knowledge had been lost to us. Now, let me also share that when we did the Narragansett Indian Reservation, and I told you this earlier, we did the Narragansett Indian Reservation I took my team, both of indigenous people and non-indigenous people, out to do the mapping. Before, I went to an elder in the tribe who had been a hunter all over New England. So I said, if anybody knows these, these stones, he will have seen them all over New England. So I went to him and I said, can you tell me what the ceremonial stones mean? Those right here on the reservation. And he looked at me like he didn't know what I was talking about, speaking a different language. I said, OK, he doesn't know. After we finished mapping those on the reservation, and I now was the caretaker of a lot of knowledge, I went back to him and I said, well, this means this, and that means that. And he said, and then he started telling me all the stuff that he knew. I said, wait a minute. I, I, I came to you before, and I asked you for this information. And, and you acted like you didn't know anything. And he said, um, Harris, you weren't ready. I said, pardon me, sir, but I'm 70 years old. What do you mean I'm, I wasn't ready? 
He said, you aren't ready. Well, at 75, I can appreciate what he's talking about. <laughs> because when you're not ready, you're not, if you can't see it, you can't see it. If you can't appreciate it, if you cannot stand and defend it, you're not ready. So I share with you that because I want you to be ready. Now this lady, I was shocked. How ready, she was ready to go to war. <laughs> As a matter of fact, she wanted me to come up there and go to war. I said, wait a minute. I'm going to war on a lot of different fronts. But you need to be here right now because I'm seeing this, this, and they're going to do that. And you need. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Thank you for being the warrior that you are. And then she started interpreting the Constitution. Uh, it, was knowledge, it was knowledge I needed. More tools that I needed in my toolkit if I was going to be the warrior that I thought I was. <laughs> if I was going to teach other people. Yes, ma'am. I want to ask you, are there geomagnetic and gravity field anomalies around these sites? Have you tested to see if uh, there are magnetic and gravitational anomalies? Well, we have not, we have not begun that testing process. We are starting to move to the additional phases of what we, but what we have found on occasion is that you'll go with a compass and all of a sudden the compass is going. <laughs> there you go. So yes, they're there. And the evidence has, has spoken to us. Or sometimes you'll know that north is over there and you go here and it's pointing, oh, wait a minute, what's this all about? So yes, they're geomagnetic fields that we have not yet begun to test. What we've just begun to test is for age. We have an agency that has asked to be remain anonymous until we get our results back, who have just this year gone out and done a lot of testing to determine the age of the stone features. Because if we can prove that they're 3,000 years old, then it's clear to everybody that no colonists had anything to, nor at least not an English colonist, had anything to do with this. Any other questions? I planted her in the audience. <laughs> um, what I don't do, and I cannot tell another human being what they must do. Them, I will not attempt to repair them. My mission is to protect them and to teach others how to protect them. It is the ancestors who knew what they were doing. It is not we the curious who have the right to replicate or confuse what has already been developed. So I've had people say, well, I can do that, or I should do that, or I had one lady say, we are going to be charging so much, we'd like for you to come and consult because we're gonna teach people. I said, wait a minute, wrong answer. That is sacrilege, Sacri listen to me please, that is sacrilege. I will not come and be a part of your, your workshop. I will, I will protest if you develop such a workshop, and I'll be there throwing rocks and, and, and using picket signs if you attempt it. <laughs> so she had to be real clear that I didn't have to get that huffy. I recently met her, and I met her husband, and I spent uh, a night in their home, and she was from Europe, and her artwork um, depicted all that she had borrowed, all that she had siphoned from other cultures. And she was just going to add this to her toolkit. I spoke with her, I embraced her, I tried to deal with her respectfully, and I tried to mend the space that had been wrenched open by my response to the fact that they wanted to just do what curious Americans do. And that's me too. I can do that too. Mm. And I know that in the Buddhist tradition, the use of stones is a practice. <clears throat> and what you as a Buddhist American do in 50 years can go to the National Register of Historic Places. And I've said this, we've presented multiple property listing to the National Register for Indigenous American Ceremonial Stone Landscapes of the Northeast. I said, because if a Scotsman comes here and wants to Scottishly place stones, I cannot stand in his way or her way. 
And then in 50 years, the stones that they create will be eligible by law for the National Register. I said, so I want to make sure that this is well defined as indigenous American. Yes, ma'am. Your first picture reminded me uh, on the big island of Hawaii, they have their temples and their stones are similar to the first one we saw. So maybe there's something you know, bigger than just America mm. that's with the stone people. Well, if in fact that Hawaiian American wishes to come here and build stones in his tradition, in 50 years I want him to be able to go to the National Register. I, what I want to be able to do is to keep the distinction between what our ancestors did and what anybody else may do. Or what anybody may have done in Scotland or Ireland. Yes, or in Hawaii. I, I was speaking from the spirit of us as well, one people. I, I hear here in North America, uh, <coughs> Hawaii is North America also right now, but, uh, mm. but the spiritual with the ancestors, like our ancestors are connected in some way mm. that knew how to speak to the elements and our other relatives. Mm. I believe what you're saying. But I cannot impose my belief on a scientist. Scientist wants to see the facts, he wants to see the data. I have to present the data, and that scientist is then guiding a federal agency, and that federal agency will either agree with me and protect something, or disagree with me and disallow protection. Right now, we've had that happen. FERC, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, allowed the gas line company to dismantle one third of the 73 stones that we identified, stone features we identified. They dismantled them. They then took them to a storehouse. They documented them, took them to a storehouse, and then did their construction work, and then came back and reproduced them and said, This is what we are giving you. That is our mitigation. We said, no, you've engaged in sacrilege. You cannot recreate what our ancestors did a thousand or two thousand years ago. So that's what we're fighting with. That's what I have to battle. I have to be prepared to operate from the culture and the tradition, but to document it scientifically. Yes. And Ted, I was thinking that the question or comment that Netu was making is, is it possible that indigenous people in other places of the world may have similar stone oh. formations, just like the pyramids are found not only in Egypt, but they're found you know, in South America, in, in Central uh, America, and, in communication. And I believe that. But my belief Oh, that's been documented. My, but my, my belief does not say a scientist. Scientist wants to see data. So what we've done is we've packaged what we do in the form of scientific data that is not challenging to the cultural belief system of the four tribes who put that together. Yes. So my father taught me that when I was mad at somebody or I had an issue to dig a hole, and shout it in the hole, and then fill the hole. It works quite well, doesn't it? Yes, by the time you dig a hole, it had to be three feet deep. <laughs> <laughs> and I taught that to my kids. And these days, there's a lot of pain and anxiety, and, and people get hurt, and there's accidents, and you know, people's fathers get killed in the war, or whatever. It would be nice to be able to to go to that spot, get a stone, put your prayer on the stone, and bring it to another sacred spot and add it, and you know, talk to the Earth Mother and ask her to, you know, intercede or help with the pain. I just, I don't see why it has to end. Mm. Why we can't teach this in a respectful way, 
and have a proper place and for people to make sure that they're not disturbed. And I think that'd be kind of cool if there's such mm -hmm. a thing. You and I have to worry about thought because thought will lead us down a some. Lot of stones we'll, here. <laughs> thought will lead us a, right behind Mr. Trump and over yeah, over right over a chasm. Here. We need to be careful, yeah. and in the role that I play, I cannot confuse what I must do with what I would like to do. I would like to, if a, if a tree knocks a stone grouping down, I'd like to be able to repair it. I'd like to be able to go back to that place on Pratt Hill where the man knocked down those stones and put them back in place. But what I recognize is that is not my mission. Hmm. Doug, stick to your mission. Right. Now, if in fact a medicine person comes along and says, this is what we must now do, I'll step back mm -hmm. because he has guidance or she has guidance beyond what I have. The guidance that I have from the ancestors is your job is to protect and teach others how to protect. Mm -hmm. not, to, not to replicate, mm -hmm. not to satisfy your need to um, help other people do this in, in a similar way, mm -hmm. but to protect. So I share with that with you, please. What we've begun to do with our four tribes, we've begun to reach out to the tribes in Maine because we're working with them to get them involved with their state historic preservation offices to come in with us and join this process. What I would want you to do is to have us help you get in touch with a local tribe. And then we can come up and assist them and you in identifying what this was and how to protect it. Now, some people will say, oh, it's squared off inside. Well, that's obviously not Indians, because Indians only deal in circles. <laughs> What's a longhouse? Thank you. What kind, of, what kind of footprint does a longhouse have? It's rectangular. So you only see the roof, and you say, oh, well, that's the, no. We dealt in rectangles. We dealt in squares. We dealt in full geometry. When I, when I presented this mapping on the Narragansett Indian Reservation, at the two years later, I was presented with a footprint, an architectural footprint of a new health center that we had just gotten funded for. And that footprint was going to block three of the alignments that we had mapped. So I did a position paper, submitted it to the tribal chief sachem, and I said, if in fact this building goes into place where it's planned, we will lose the ability of future Narragansetts to use an instrument left behind by their ancestors to learn astronomy and geometry. It took him less than a week to write me back and said, that's not going to happen, not on my watch. We will not block the ability of the Narragansett future to communicate with the ancestors. He said, but is there anything we can do? <laughs> I said, that was Chief Sachem Matthew Thomas. We now have a new Chief Sachem, and Matthew retired, and uh, Anthony Dean Stanton is the new tribal chief. But What I gave him was what I had my scientists give to me. And that was, if in fact the building was rotated 70 feet, it could be rotated away from blocking those alignments. The building was still in design, so it was on paper, it was rotated 70 feet. And now we have the full ceremonial landscape unblocked. But the exciting thing that happened was that the front door of the building, as it was rotated, was rotated into alignment with a shadow that is cast by a stone that casts a shadow between two uprights at the time of the fall equinox. So now, the entranceway to that building has a shadow from the fall equinox <laughs> cast into it. 
Now, I haven't been told by the medicine people whether that's good or bad, <laughs> but it's happening, and it was done by virtue of the tribe doing the right thing. Yes. Just a quick comment, Jennifer. Um, in Glendale, we have a we have an underground chamber. We have more than one. Um, there's actually Doug has some in the future slides. But we have a beehive chamber, um, and we have some that are square with flat tops. Now this is a this is a half hour presentation, but we can take three hours because if if you as an audience needs dialogue, I'm here for that. Okay, so you got you got to be cautious because you're playing with me, and I love to play long and hard. Okay. <laughs> Next slide, please. What? I see where they get the laughter from. <laughs> Hell. <laughs> Screen. This is a serpentine road. I just wanted to show all of it. This is the head of the serpent, and this is the body of the serpent. And for indigenous people, serpent was not evil. Serpent was not a sign of the devil. It was a part of a whole other belief system, and I'm sorry that my sister has left because I would love for her to share her belief as she did about the turtle. Mm. But we are told that the ancient traditions, serpent was a part of the balance and the harmony. And we are told as below, so above. And we absolutely will not be able to see this in this level of reflectance. But go to the next slide. This, if you could see it, is, well, that is the star Antares. And this is in the constellation Scorpius. And another configuration within Scorpius is what the Cherokee call Uktena. Uh -huh. Now I can speak that word in Cherokee because I can't speak the equivalent in Narragansett during this time of year. Um, in English we would call that a taboo. <laughs> it's something we simply cannot do. It is to be done only in the winter time. But hopefully I'm not offending <laughs> Cherokee tradition. I was I was shared with, with uh, I was given Uktena by Walker Calhoun of uh, Cherokee, who explained Uktena in the tradition in Cherokee. And he said that they had a wonderful experience once. They heard the Uktena coming down the mountain. He lived up in Big Cove. Heard the Uktena coming down the mountain. It was in the middle of a storm. They found out it was just a gas tank that had broke loose, and it was thumping and banging against the rocks. <laughs> But he and his family were sure that the Uktena was coming for them. <laughs> so in the, in the constellation of, a, of Scorpius, there is a horned serpent. And you can see this is a part of its tail, the horns. And in its throat, or in its head, depending on how you configure that, is the star Antares and the story, the lore around Uktena is that if you find an uktena in the woods and you can pluck from it that quartz jewel, then it will bring you all kinds of great powers. Well, no one has ever reported having <laughs> plucked it and come back alive with the great power. So the presumption is that either uktena destroyed the plucker or the plucker never found it. <laughs> but that jewel is Antares. So next slide. A little higher. Right be one of the things that you look for with, with the serpent as a serpentine row, as a ceremonial stone row, is behind the head there is often a niche. And in that niche can be found an orange or yellow stone. And that's one of the things you look for. Was there one? Why? Yeah. Oh, there is, on this one, there is one right there. Uh -huh. And that is the equivalent, as above, so below, 
of the Antares. Wow, what's in, that stone made of? That stone is made of jasper. And most of the time you will find the orange or yellow stone will be jasper. Oh. Yes? Where is the jasper from? Some jasper can be found in New England. Some jasper can be found in North Carolina. But jasper is usually found some distance away from where it's being used. So people are bringing it specifically for that use. With a serpentine row, there are certain things that are classic. There is the head, often the stone, usually an undulating form, and usually its tail will be in a body of water, a spring, a lake, a pond, a river, a brook. So those are the four things that we look for. Are you having a revelation, my dear? It's like the water dragon. Well, the question, and I, I'm so sorry that, that my Mayan sister is not here because she would give us explanations that I'm not prepared to offer. We have begun moving northward, and I hadn't considered southward, but northward into the ancient tribes north of us who still have a star tradition. And I've met some of them. And they have, they have described songs and dances. And I met them in, in, in a ceremony that was depicting Iroquoian star songs. And what the star songs, and this was um, the um, Anthony Avini at Colgate University. He's written several uh, archaeoastronomy works. And he was describing and depicting the archaeoastronomy of the Iroquois people and the songs that they had and the myths that they had. And we had two men who had come down from um, northern Ontario. And they were down at, for United South and Eastern Tribes meeting at the um, Oneida Reservation. And we were all laid back looking up in this planetarium. And he was, Anthony Avini was describing what we were seeing. And all of a sudden, I hear in a foreign language somebody saying something. And then I heard it get translated into French. And then I heard it get translated into English. And he was, when it was translated, it was, go back, go back. And so they rolled the thing back. And he said, there, there, translated through three languages. and. He said that it was the dog star, and that they had a song and a dance that celebrated the dog star. And he and his brother, he was the medicine man, his brother was the chief, they got up and they started playing their drums and singing the song to the dog star. So I said, well, if they know that much, I may have to travel all the way up there, but I'm going to get them to help us decipher some of what we're finding, because we are finding what the ancients were depicting. And we no longer have the songs, and we no longer have the stories. Or at least those who haven't are telling me that I'm not ready yet. <laughs> <laughs>